Yeah, I know, we're like seven hours late on this, but I wanted to talk about this because it's very interesting, you know, the implications behind all these moves. Because the Montreal Canadiens earlier today, and I mean earlier today, like eight hours ago, sent down a whole bunch of guys on waivers. Now, at the moment, they're still on waivers. We don't know who's going to get claimed, if anybody's going to go to any other team. We'll know that tomorrow morning, but... The guys that were sent down, some of them are surprising, others are kind of expected, but overall it makes for some good discussion over here. So while the Habs scrimmage is going on, we had ourselves some very good performances there. I wanted to focus mostly on the actual waiver guys getting sent down. Because starting off the list in alphabetical order, we have ourselves Brandon Baddock, and yeah, that's not really a guy whom a lot of Canadiens fans were expecting to be a part of the Montreal Canadiens, so he'll probably go over to Laval. You have yourselves Alex Belzeal, which was an interesting pickup. He's a guy who was honestly pretty okay last year in the preseason. I liked his chemistry with Ryan Paling. He played a game in the postseason last year, but he's always been a career AHLer, so him going back down to Laval isn't the most surprising thing in the world. You have Joseph Blandisi, again, not really a guy that a lot of people were expecting to be a Montreal Canadiens full-time forward this upcoming season. Same could be said about Laurent Dauphin. But then we have the last forward on the list, and it's Jordan Wheel, who was going down to Laval, and this is a very interesting one right here. You know all the people who are going out there saying, oh, getting rid of these so-called cap problems for the Canadians, oh, it's going to be so easy, all they got to do is trade Wheel. But the idea that we spoke about in a previous video was how Mark Bergevin said trading guys is so much more difficult today than it was before the pandemic hit and before there was a flat cap. So, with Jordan Wheel, this will prove whether or not that easy solution of just getting rid of him is actually viable here because now every NHL team has an opportunity to get Jordan Wheel for free. If Jordan Wheel goes down there and he's not claimed by anybody, then then okay, it kind of proves Mark Bergevin's point that just getting rid of guys for the sake of getting rid of them today is a lot more difficult than it had been in the past. So for Wheel, it's really interesting to see him actually go down. I saw a lot of Habs fans joking around saying, oh, what are we going to do on the power play now that Wheel's not here? And I get that it's a joke, but like, yeah, it's something really ironic taking a look at how this guy was used in the past few months of the previous season and then taking a look at how he is going to go down to Laval now. But then over on the defense, we have ourselves some other stories to talk about. Noah Juleson, man, this guy is getting sent down, and I just hope he doesn't get claimed, man. Noah Juleson's always been a guy whom I've been a big believer in, especially during his time with the Everett Silver Tips, but man, missing time and not really having his share in the lineup, it's really been a big part, so I'm not really surprised to see him go down, but at the same time, I'd be lying if I said that I personally would not have given him a chance, because... Come on, man, the guys missed out on so much time. It makes sense as to why they're getting rid of him from the Canadiens roster this season and sending him to Laval, but at the same time, you know, the opposite says, oh, why not just try him out, but whatever. Noah Jolson's getting sent down. Hopefully, he's a monster in the AHL. Then we have some interesting names, too. Gustav Olofsson, Xavier Ouellette, another few players over here that don't really seem like they would be locks for the lineup. And then you have Charlie Lindgren as well going on waivers, too. If we go over... Over onto the Canadian scrimmage lineups for today. You had yourselves the Team White versus the Team Red, and you can just really label out who is the team with the NHL players and who's the team that doesn't have them. Because Team White has a very good selection of goalies. I mean, they have Jake Allen and Caden Primo. Allen's probably going to be the backup. You can definitely tell the intention here was to get Price and Allen going against each other because these are the two guys that are going to be playing. But look at Team Red. Detardino, Gallagher, Drew and Suzuki, Anderson, to Foley, Kotkin, Yemi, Armia, Byron, Evans, Lekkonen, that's pretty much the team. Team White has Froelich, Paling, Perry, Dauphin, Vejdemo, Wheel, Teasdale, Lynch, Belzeal. These are just the AHL guys and the prospects and the guys who are getting sent down on waivers, even the D pairings. The red team D pairings is the Habs D pairings. And then on the other team... Ulet Mete, Olafson, Juleson, Leskin, and Flurry. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely stacked. And that's kind of why I didn't want to make a video just full on dissecting the Canadian scrimmage because it's so obvious what they're trying to do here. They're just trying to get the team red, which is pretty much the Habs, playing off together and understanding what it's like to be a team. 
Maybe the top line of Team White becomes the Taxi Squad, but who knows. But as of right now, though, the guys on your screen, these guys are all on waivers. We'll see who goes to Lavelle, who stays in the organization, and who gets picked off. Hope you enjoyed this video. Talk to me in the comments what you think. Social Ash Rolls is 99. And bye.